Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Following on from the things you may have missed in Limgrave, we're back today with the Weeping Peninsula. And today, we'll go through what I think are the best and most missable things throughout the Weeping Peninsula. I'll have the link below to Limgrave if you missed that one. So let's go straight into tip one. So once you've entered into the Weeping Peninsula and gone past the first group of enemies, you'll very quickly come up on the Castle Morn Ramparts Site of Grace. And make sure that you pass the time at the Site of Grace to night time and you'll see there is another Knight's Cavalry enemy here, just like there was in Limgrave. This one is a bit stronger and wields a flail. However, it's worth powering through and trying to kill him because he'll give you a really good bleed dex weapon, the Knight Rider Flail, and also the Barricade Shield Ash of War for anyone that likes to use a sword and shield. And then straight into tip number two, as long as you're quick enough and it's still nighttime, there is another nighttime boss to kill here. Again, he will only show up at night. You want to go southwest towards where I'm showing you on the map and you'll find the Death Bird. He can be a bit more erratic. I did struggle with this guy the first few times I fought him, but keep at it. I'm sure you've got it. You can always level yourself up, do the other tips in this guide and then come back later when you're a bit stronger if you are having a bit of trouble with him. He gives you uh, a, a decent amount of runes and a very mediocre axe. So honestly, it's fine to miss him if you're having a bad time with him. I just really, really like to kill every single boss in the game. I am such a completionist. Now, for tip number three, you want to go back to the Castle Morn Rampart site of grace we rested at before and head directly east and you'll see a spirit stream that you can jump up. Once you're up here, head straight for the north side of the tower that you'll see directly in front of you. There is a pack of wolves that you want to clear out so they don't give you any grief while you're doing this quest. And then when you speak to the little gargoyle statue with the book, it will say to seek three wise beasts. When it says seek, it means murder. And when it says wise beasts, it means spectral turtles or tortoises. I think they're tortoises, but the game calls them turtles. And people got quite annoyed about it. So the first beast, as you can see, is directly behind you on the road. Then you want to head round to the southwest and you'll see that there's a little pool here. If you just stand around for a few seconds, you'll see it splash. And when it does, you can just slash at it. That's that one dead. Then it does take me a little time to find this last one. It's in one of the bushes and it takes me a while before I see it. But you can see it just there on your left hand side by the stairs leading up to the tower as you're facing it. Jump off and get that one dead and the seal will be open. And then when you make your way to the top of the tower, that will reward you with a memory stone. Memory stones are fantastic for anyone who's using spells, because the more memory stones you have, the more spells you can attune. Tip 4 is for a fairly hidden stone sword key. If you head directly north from the tower we just at, you'll see the Beside the Crater Pocked Glade Site of Grace fittingly named after the crater that it is beside. There's a few enemies there and they summon another one of them vampire dudes. I was going to make that a tip because I assumed he was going to drop something really cool. He doesn't. He's very boring. So instead, head further north to where you see me on the map here and there is a stone sword key on the dead dude in the chair. And then once you've done that, our next tip is pretty much directly beneath us. There's a hidden cave. So you want to just head back south again until the cliff is shallow enough that you can jump off without doing too much damage to yourself. And then swing back round to the north and go underneath to the cave and I will meet you there for the next tip. So almost straight away after doing the first couple of hallways you'll be faced with this. And essentially what you want to do is run onto this platform and it will start to lift up. It's not just a floor, it's actually a moving platform. Sprint to the left hand side and you can grab a grave violet. Then what you want to do as as the platform's lowering back down again, run back where you just were and get back in that hallway. Now the platform will start going back up again and you can use this opportunity to jump below it. And that's where the majority of this cave is, is below this moving floor. In the next room is loads of these zombie dudes and they perpetually respawn. 
So you basically just want to grab all the items, beeline through them, and make for the ladder at the other end of this room. There's no harm grinding a few of them if you want. They're very easy to kill, but they barely give you any souls either. So honestly, it's really not worth it. Just grab the items and get gone. Up the ladder, you'll see the lever. Down a few more hallways, you'll be able to jump through a hole and then pop out right by the boss. Now, the boss you will probably have already fought in Limgrave. It's just another one of them Erd Tree Burial Watchdogs. There are definitely cats. I don't know why the fuck it's called a watchdog. It's a cat. It's obviously a cat. Anyway, this one comes with like four or five of them bloody imp statues. So just try and bait it around the room. Just try and kite it around the room as you're picking off the imps. And then fight it as you would the other one. Obviously, you've got your summons. You've got your... You've got your spirit ashes, you've got player summons if you need help with it. It's not too bad, it's just all of these ads that it comes with. They are such a bugger. But, as I've been talking, you can see me doing the fight here. Hopefully that'll help out if you needed any help. I'm sure you didn't. I'm sure you're going to absolutely smash it. But anyway, that rewards you with some demi-human ashes. These guys are absolutely great to basically just use as bait. There's five of them. They're not very fast. They're not very strong. They're not very... They haven't got much health. But because of the sheer volume of them, they're really good for certain bosses and certain groups of enemies. Now let's get out of here. It's bonus tip time! No, but seriously though. While I was attempting to find the cave for the next tip, I accidentally stumbled upon an item I've never seen before. As you can see on the map here, what you basically want to do is follow that main road along from the east side of the island until you get to where the Erd tree is, go slightly north and hop off, and you can grab the site of grace you can see that's just to the southwest of me. You won't be needing that site of grace at the moment, so you can just go straight to the Erd tree and head to my location if you want. And where you can see that I'm facing, just get on your horse and jump down to me from there. Now you want to just traverse these couple of platforms here and you'll see that you can drop down either on or off your horse i always get off just in case i feel like i'm gonna overshoot it if i'm on the horse and you can drop down and grab yourself a really awesome early game shield as you can see it's got a hundred percent physical damage resist and any shield worth its salt has a hundred percent physical damage resist unless it is your only option sell any shield that doesn't have 100% physical. What's the point? And the rest of its stats, for a lightweight medium shield, it's pretty damn good. So, you're welcome. <laughs> right, now we've done that, we will actually move on to the tip I wanted to show you before. Okay, so for tip number six, head back up the mountain again, towards the north of the Erd Tree. I will show you the map in just a second. Unfortunately, it doesn't let you open your map when enemies in here. I don't understand why. It's your fault if you die, right? This is supposed to be a game that doesn't hold your hand. So surely they should let you open the map and then just suffer the consequences, right? <laughs> right, now that you can see where I am on the map, I'm facing a couple of pillars against a rock face. What you want to do is run towards the right-hand side pillar and you'll see there's a secret hidden door behind the back of it. That is the tomb we're aiming for. This is one of my favourite tombs in the game, honestly. It contains an awesome, awesome item when you kill the boss here. There's not really any confusing mechanics to call out in this dungeon. Just clear it out, kill all the skeletons, grab the items, get to the end and pull the lever as usual, and then be prepared to face the Cemetery Shade, which is one of the easiest bosses in the game if you're willing to use summons. However, if you're trying to do it by yourself, he is an absolute bitch. He's rapid, he goes invisible, he stuns you, he grabs you, he's just, oh my god. He's got no health. You can, you can one-shot him with certain attacks very easily. But because I'm trying to do this without Spirit Ashes, I really struggled. Anyway, when you kill him, you'll be rewarded with Lutel the Headless, which is probably going to be your first special summon. This guy is an absolute boost. He requires a lot of FP, so if you're not going for a magic build, you might not be able to afford to summon him yet. So you want to probably pump a few points into mind, but once you kill Godric, his great rune should give you enough FP to be able to use Lutel the Headless. There's three main reasons Lutel is so fantastic. First is his tankiness, second is his damage, and third is his mobility. He's got it all in one. He's crazy tanky with a massive great shield, 
and a huge health pool. He's got that huge spear that means he can hit most enemies without them being able to hit back. And what's more is he can go invisible and teleport. So even his slow movement speed doesn't slow him down because in the blink of an eye, he's right behind the enemy again. I used him for most of the game until I got the really OP summons at the end of the game. But yeah, honestly, guys, he's so good. This next one is a tip for all of you faith builds out there. This is an amazing spell if you are going faith, especially for big bosses or for PvP. It's called the Flame of Frenzy, and you will find it here in the Ailing Village. So as I've just shown you, you want to go back to that first site of grace that we were using for the first few tips, head west, and then go up the hill into the Ailing Village. As you're going through, you will see the Kalu Baptismal Church towards the southeast of the village. And here you will find the spell I've just been talking about and also a sacred tier so you can level up your flasks a bit more. Just be careful of all the enemies around here because they will stack madness on you which can insta-kill you depending on how much health you've got. Right, we're on to the final three tips for this area. Next, you want to teleport back to that Tombs Ward site of grace that we unlocked earlier and head right down to the southwest where you see that pile of what appear to be shacks on the map. On the way, you'll encounter a walking mausoleum. We'll cover what these things do properly in a later video. However, if you want to know how to take it down, you essentially have to clear out a roughly 60% of the crust and rocks that have built up around its feet. So you'll see I'm chopping at it a bit as I'm going past there when you chop enough of them it flops down and then you can enter inside if you wondered how they worked now when we get to the isolated merchant the main reason we wanted to come here is the lantern i believe this is the earliest point in the game where you can get a lantern and a lantern as it says there attached to your waist to illuminate surroundings this means you can now explore caves without having to use one of your weapon slots for a torch. You can just clip it on your belt and you can dual wield, you can two hand, you can actually, you can, you've got your hands free again, it's incredible. It doesn't give you as much light as the torch, but in most circumstances, it's enough. Also, as you saw, there's a few stone sword keys there that you can grab. Fairly cheap ones as well. I think the one from Patches is like five or six K. So 2000 per key, that's amazing. Grab them as well. Another thing about these merchants is you can actually kill them and they will drop their bell bearing. And if you didn't know, you can give the bell bearings to the twin maiden husks in Round Table Hold. And that basically just gives the shopkeeper's inventory to them. So if you go around the world killing all of these traveling merchants, you can then just have a one-stop shop for all of their gear in round table hold i don't do that because the sin mechanic is back from other dark souls games and it is a sin to kill them and then you have to request absolution and to do that you need a certain item so i don't advise killing them but i know a lot of people do that being said i haven't seen how the sin mechanic does actually negatively impact your game anywhere yet so i imagine the repercussions for killing these guys and taking their bell bearings isn't too bad anyway but, I don't know, I just feel bad doing it. I feel mean, so I leave them where they are. The second last tip for this video is the big old Tower of Return you see on the southeast coast there. As we head over to it, you'll see there's a lot of enemies, including a big bad knight on a horse. So there's got to be some awesome loot at the top of this tower, right? Nope, it's a trap. But it's okay. It's one of the more forgiving traps in the game. There is a site of grace pretty much as soon as you exit out of the trap. There's a humongous giant you can go and try and tackle as well. He's very slow. He's very easy to dodge, just like all the other stone giants in the game. But he's got something absurd like 20,000 health and he packs a punch. He can easily one-shot someone at the recommended level for Weeping Peninsula. So it's probably worth leaving him now, just stealing the loot and getting out of there. If you're interested, the loot is a Blessed Dew Talisman, which slowly regenerates health. And my god, does it mean slowly. It gives you like one health every couple of seconds. It's just not worth it. So all in all, this whole area, pretty pointless, but kind of cool that it gives you a glimpse of one of the last areas in the game this early on. So I thought I'd stick it in for that reason. And for the final tip for this video, we've gone from one of the worst talismans in the game to one of the best. So you want to head all the way to the northwest here to the Weeping Evergal. I know it's not particularly missable, 
But the reason I put it in this video is because I know a lot of players are going to skip the Evergals and come back and fight them later because they have particularly strong enemies in them and you're not allowed summons or spirit ashes so they can be quite challenging fights. But honestly the guy in here really isn't that bad. He staggers easily and he doesn't have much health so as long as you're really aggressive and up in his face he doesn't have chance to do much. He has powerful attacks especially in phase 2 when he starts using a lot of frost magic but just stay on his and keep smashing him up and you should take him down no problem at all and you'll be rewarded with radagon's star <laughs> with radagon's scar seal now as you can see here it gives you plus three to vigor endurance strength and dexterity which is going to give you a hp boost a stamina boost an equip load boost and will increase the damage of any strength or dex weapons you're using as well as probably helping you to hit the requirements for other weapons that you weren't previously able to wield without this seal. It also only increases the damage you take by something quite minor like 5 or 10%. And in a game like Elden Ring, where most bosses late game will kill you in two hits anyway, an extra 10% to the damage you take isn't really that much. So personally, for the stat boost you get, I honestly think it's worth running this for the majority of the game. And there you go, that's it for this one. And just really quickly, I wanted to say thank you so, so much to everyone that's here right now. The reception for the first video of this series has been phenomenal, and I'm so happy. I'm really bad at plugging myself, I always feel really cringe so i'll leave it to the last few seconds of the video so uh please please like and subscribe and do all that youtube -y thing stuff thank you <laughs> um yes and i hope you have an awesome day i will see you with part three when we will probably do liania of the lakes bye bye